Good morning, good morning, and let's start. Uh, welcome and thank you for being here. Uh, we are here together for the presentation of Talita Kum, um, of the annual report of Talita Kum, in, of Talita Kum, the International Network Against Human Trafficking. Uh, in this document, you will find all the information about one year, the 2021, of the activities of Talita Kum. Then it's a report that means data collected all around the world uh, by the Talita Kum network. It means stories. You will find stories from the sisters, stories from survivors and victims about their journey of liberation. And having the, the opportunity, having had the opportunity to work with the international team of Talita Kum on this document, um, I can say that by reading it, you find for sure a report, but also an interesting and competent point of view on human trafficking. Um, all the information in the report are the result of a work of the network at the international, regional, and local levels of Talita Kum. Uh, this work is based on dialogue and listening. Listening, first of all, to the victim, to the survivors. Dialogue between, dialogue with the victims and dialogue between the, all the members of the network of Talita Kum. Then, I will share with you some advices, technical advices now, before starting. Uh, first of all, if you have any question, uh, feel free to use the chat. And at the end of the, of the panel, we will have a time for uh, uh, Q&A. And the meeting is happening in uh, more languages. We have English and uh, Spanish. Then you have the icon, uh, the globe icon. If you click on the icon, you can choose your language. Let me introduce the panel. We have Sister Patricia Murray, Executive Director of USG, the, Interna the, U the International Union of the Superior General. We have Sister Gabriella Bottani, the Coordinator of Talita Cum International. Sister May Mayra Cuellar, the Talita Cum International Team, Marion Paparella, Talita Cum International Team, uh, Sister Abby, Abby Avellino, Talita Cum Asia, Sister Bernadette Reis, journalist and commentator from Vatican News. My name is Alessandra Tarquini, and I work for Global Solidarity Fund, one of the partners of Talita Cum. Uh, we have a great news because Sister Nadia Coppa is with us, the president of USG. Then I will pass her the, the floor to share with us some words. Okay. Thank you and uh, good morning to each of you. I, first of all, uh, I would like to express my gratitude to Sister Gabriella. She invited me to be present. And for me, it's a joy because uh, it's uh, my first opportunity that uh, I, I have to see each of you and to share this important moment for uh, uh, Talita Kum Network. Um, in the name of UISG, uh, I would like to express uh, my joy and gratitude for the prophetic commitment that uh, you are doing um, for uh, supporting uh, uh, anti-trafficking and to promote the dignity of the women around the world. I am here for listening and uh, I am here for uh, receiving uh, um, the joy to, to know more about uh, the importance of this project, this network, and uh, I express really my openness and my joy to um, uh, to listen to the report of the, the past year and uh, to continue to move new steps in the future for promoting uh, this uh, important commitment at USG. So thank you very much and uh, many blessings to each of you.
Thank you very much, Sister Nadia. It was a pleasure. And uh, now I give the floor to Sister Patricia Murray, the Executive Director of uh, USG. Uh, you will find also a test written by Sister Pat in the report. Thank you very much, Alexander. Uh, I'm de delighted to join with Sister Nadia uh, on behalf of the International Union of Superiors General in congratulating everybody who's behind the report. And what I mean by that is as you read the report and you see the facts and figures and you read the stories, I think we have to see the faces behind the statistics. Pope Francis always reminds us that behind every statistics, there's a human face. There's a human story, there's a human journey, there's a human yearning uh, for fullness of life that the gospel speaks of. Somebody who set out on a life journey looking to, to live as fully as possible and to have opportunities, and then who was cruelly exploited by somebody along the road. Somebody who was tricked or, or, or in, through their family or their, their wider relations or through somebody who came to their town or village were persuaded that this was a good opportunity to live a better life somewhere else. So I think of all the stories and all the people behind the statistics, but I also think of all those, the sisters and the collaborators who are working on so many aspects of uh, human trafficking to protect the victim, to raise awareness, to rescue and to rehabilitate, to speak out and, den and denounce, to be a prophetic voice in the world today. And I think this, this whole area of human traffic is, trafficking is something that we can never forget about. These are our brothers and sisters. And I was very uh, struck last night as I uh, read through the BBC and saw a report on human trafficking in Kenya. And the focus was particularly on the trafficking of handicapped children from Tanzania to Kenya. It's a horrific report, but it's worth following because I think it's, it's an, another area where we have to follow and see what's happening on the ground between Tanzania and also uh, Kenya. What happened was an investigative reporter began to see a huge number of children in wheelchairs on the streets of Nairobi and began to talk to them and ask them their story and discovered that their families had been persuaded uh, by visitors to their village to let them go to Kenya, to Nairobi, where they were told they would earn money which would be sent back to their families. Of course, no money has reached their families. I think the saddest part of this report for me was that the trafficker, the main trafficker of this little uh, investigative report was a handicapped person, an adult, who was exploiting the handicapped situation of others, particularly of children. So it, it really struck me as I read the report that we need to keep our, our eyes open, our minds and hearts open, and that as we as sisters, as we and those with whom we work, as we move through our towns and cities, that we begin to have eyes to spot what is unusual, what has changed on our landscape, which may give us a clue to new areas in which young people or adults are being trafficked for various purposes. I'm very conscious as you read the report and as we read the report, every one of us will be struck in a different way. And I think the, the challenge to each of us is what am I called to do, but also who am I called to be as a human person? And who am I called to call others to be and to do? So that together we create 
a, a human community where no kind of exploitation such as this may occur. Uh, often it comes out of desperation and poverty, and we have to find ways to tackle the root causes. But I, I'm so grateful that we have this report. I congratulate Sister Gabriella and her team and all of you who are attending today and who participated in many different ways for producing this report, which as it's read throughout the world, I'm sure will make a difference. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Sister Pat, thank you. What can we do? I might call to do what we can do together. What can we do together? I think in the report, we find some of the answer to this question. And now I give the floor to Sister Gabriella Buttani, the coordinator of the Talitacum International. Uh, she will give us an overview of the report, but not just of the report of the year, the 2021, and uh, also some highlights. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody. Uh, I'm really delighted to be here and uh, feeling the support of uh, our leaders in at UISG, Sister Nadia and Sister Patricia, because uh, this report is really a result uh, of uh, a journey done together, supporting one each other Again, not only close uh, among religious sisters, but opening, uh, embracing uh, one another, embracing the vulnerabilities, but also let uh, we let us embraced by vulnerable people in different situations. If I go back in 2015, when I arrived uh, uh, at UISG for uh, the international coordination, of Talita Kum, I see that we did uh, an enormous, an amazing journey in uh, um, our ability to share more among us, but also in collecting data, sharing stories, because um, I always feel and I believe it deeply that Talita Kum is every person committed in anti-trafficking, starting for the people who are trapped into trafficking with their wish for a new and better life. This is the soul, the deep reality of uh, our networking and our sharing uh, and, uh, and the fact that we are sharing our life with these people throughout the world. If I go back and when I received the, the report, I couldn't believe I was uh, looking and looking at the, the pages and the stories and the, com the comments we received, the beautiful introduction from uh, Sister Nadia, the amazing final words of Sister Pat, uh, and then uh, the, the numbers, uh, the statistics, and how we were able to collect not only quantitative data, but uh, more and more the team in Rome with uh, a lot of creativity. I, you can't imagine how happy I was when Sister Mara uh, sometimes came to me and said, oh, Sister Gabriella, why we do not start to create journey of liberation to give voice to the good practices and interviewing the sisters and telling stories of survivor. So the uh, creativity of the younger generation joining Talita Kum Rome, we are able really to feed uh, the contents of, uh, of, this, um, uh, of this report. And when I look at that, I realize that we are not speaking only about one year. Of course, the data we collected are focusing in 2021. But this document, this report, is showing us the journey we did after the General Assembly of Talitakum. Because uh, they immediately after the General Assembly, we had a stop with COVID. And uh, the COVID brought us, uh, uh, forced us in stopping. And from that, we started more and more to reflect together and to write down. 
we started to produce our knowledge. And uh, let me say that 2020 was a kind of time uh, of um, keeping in our body and in our souls what was happening throughout the world of Talitakum and the year 2021 with the deeper coordination and capacity in uh, team working, we were able to start to write. So we had uh, the text for the seven videos, we had the, the call to action written and more participative way. So again, this report uh, um, is giving us also uh, more than one year, but what is going on with the Talitaku. And again, um, it is much more than numbers. While we are speaking here in these few days, I was contacted by sister from different, uh, from different realities, not only by sister of a situation, for example, of children that they are disappearing in Ecuador during the political instabilities and uh, some organizations are activating themselves to track what is going on with them or um, migrants workers that they are disappearing in the Gulf countries or that they find themselves as returnee without any support and they are seeking for help. So Talita Kum and the fact that we are overcoming the um, that we are, of course, organized at country level, but then we try to spread solidarity throughout the country and national and continental borders is still an amazing call, an important call for the solidarity uh, at the global level for uh, every person so that no one will be left uh, behind. And um, the last word is a word of uh, gratitude and appreciation for all the contribution and uh, all people that took time to, to respond and to report. Because this number, as Sister Pat said, are really our life and the life of uh, many brothers and sisters. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sister Gabriella. Thank you. And now, Sister Myra Feyer. She coordinates together with uh, the Professor Peter La from the Pontificial Gregorian University, the Faculty of Social uh, Sciences, the research, the analysis. Then, Sister Myra uh, will give us um, any idea how they work together and also some global data. In, uh, in the way, yes, quantitative, but also qualitative way. Thank you, Sister Mayra. Muchas gracias, Alessandra. Y gracias Thank you so much, Alessandra. Thank you, everyone, for being here for Talita Com International in coordination with the team of social sciences. It is a pleasure to be part of this work as uh, collecting data and to be near the prevention work and human trafficking uh, organized by sisters and uh, collaborators of Salitatum and the different realities in different territories. Our quantitative and qualitative data you'll find in the annual report, especially in the section global data were collected during three months from January till March 2022 through the database of Talitacom and they show the activities of networks during 2021. It's based on data of 52 networks that represent 94.5% of data of Talitacom. So let me introduce Some of the global data you'll find in the report of Salitacom and the regional data you'll be able to deepen. For 2021, the network of Salitacom is present in 92 countries in all continents, and there are 55 networks, nine regional coordinations, and three continental coordinations. 
these 55 networks are a based unity of Salitacum and they operate at a national level. In 2021, there have been constituted five new networks in different countries. We've seen a very important increase in different categories, a rise of 92% in 2000. And we think that this is very important because it shows the ability of networks to involve volunteers and collaborators and it also shows a greater addition respecting religious communities. That data have shown a decrease of 5%. And this, has, this was a process starting in 2020. And we think it's due to to the restrictions of COVID-19. 2021 has also introduced the interprofessional data. In 2021, 24% of networks of Salita Com has collaborated with other religions for the anti-trafficking work. And in the report, you'll see other global data for example, the active participation of survivors to the activities uh, of Taltacum, and also about the subdivision at a national level. Regarding the actions of Taltacum, we've collected information on the basis of four key areas of the network prevention, care of survivors and victims, access to justice and work and network. 2021, uh, 336,958 people have been breached. And in 2021, is there were restrictions, but Talitacum continued to work and were adapted to people's needs. Many activities were made online, so there were new phases of action. And we supported victims and survivors. For example, the consultancy of migrants in vulnerability context and also the activation of a hotline for psychological problems. 1,300 people were with in 2021. And there's a little decrease of 18% due to restrictions during COVID. And these data have increased during 2021. I'm talking about people with access to justice. This is a uh, an increase from the point of view of quality. The report, the annual report of Talitatum will show you more information and the actions of networks and good practices. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sister Mayra. You will find everything, uh, all the infographic in the report, uh, all, the, all the stories and all figures in the report. Then now, Sister Abby Avellino will tell us the next steps of Talita Cum, in particular about the call to action and the training activities. Sister Abby, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Alessandra. Good morning and good afternoon and good evening for some of you. Well, on behalf of Sisters of the Grassroots, I'm, I'm so grateful for this opportunity to share our concrete steps of action. So we just have seen the uh, quantitative data presented by Sister Myra. I think we would like to see more on that. So hopefully you will read the uh, annual report in detail. So it's very rich and uh, enriching and inspiring to see the annual report, especially the, uh, the work of the Sisters at the Grassroots. So I'd like to take this opportunity also to thank our sisters who really work hard to participate or to, to complete this database as, as collated by our sisters, Sister Myra and her team. So again, Talita Kum is devoted to continued uh, its tireless efforts and human trafficking. So we have lined up some concrete actions or have identified which will be executed according to the priorities and areas of action. Some of these are, we continue to strengthen and reorganize networking at regional and international levels by increasing collaboration and communication sharing good practices, and again, forming network hubs in the area of formation, communication, networking, advocacy. In this, to strengthen the link between the grassroots, regional, and international level. This is we have identified through this time. Uh, we hope to continue this. And, and also, the, uh, the training, at which Alexandra has mentioned, that we continue the formation of new Talitakum leaders. The one-year program of the third course of leaders is ongoing, of course, with participation of 32 women and men from 22 different countries. We continue producing or and or enhancing the online educational and training tools. So we will strive to uh, to enhance our communication skill, our tools to really uh, do our collaboration of communication. Continue in supporting organizing and building community at the grassroots levels. And of course, empowering the most vulnerable communities, particularly women and young people. So how do we do that? As uh, Alexandra and Sister Pat mentioned, of course, we need to strengthen the collaboration and capacity building to continue the mission for, of caring for victims and survivors. So sisters uh, enhance their role in extending their support to women, girls, and those who need various assistance. Again, sisters at the grassroots will strive to continue their commitment to work in the areas of prevention through awareness raising, education, and information campaigns. So they will build networks which then reinforce awareness and take action. Prevention of the people at risk groups. This uh, includes targeted awareness efforts as an approaching people in situation of vulnerability in order to identify potential victims and, provide, and providing people with tools and information to protect themselves. Talitakum promotes collaboration among networks organized at national, regional, and continental level in actively supporting victims and survivors and people at risk. So we plan to do the, continue the training of trainers at the grassroots with the vision of train leaders to lead by training the community in close proximity while providing opportunities to deepen their responsibilities and to empower each other, especially those women at the grassroots or the small uh, community and their villages to enhance the uh, empowering each other. I would also would like to um, focus on the Talitakum call to action, which we uh, launched last November. So to material this, we commit ourselves to strengthen our network's inclusive model of working together. So by this, we deepen a strong collaboration with NGOs and local and international agency and other faith-based organizations with this address this 
call to action to all uh, concerned stakeholders. So we plan to translate the, the call to action into local languages, making it a working document at the grassroots level. We plan also to break down the call to action into really as uh, into pieces so that it can be better used for it by the networks. We continue to actively involve survivors within Talitagum networks by uh, supporting them long-term in their healing process and help them to make healthy decisions, live with dignity and gain sense of agency in their lives. The journey of liberation that you will see uh, from this uh, report can transform us, transform us. It can change how we act and grow in caring, healing, restoring, empowering survivors of human trafficking. I hope you will enjoy this annual report. And again, uh, we will continue to strive to continue our effort to end of this human trafficking. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Abby. Thank you. You will find everything in the website, the report, but also the call to action section, the journey of liberation. You can read a lot <laughs> in the next weeks. Um, then, uh, now, Marion Paparella from the international uh, team from Talita Kum. Um, in, the, in the report, we decided to uh, dedicate a special um, area section to three initiatives, to three initiatives. One is the call to action. Uh, one is uh, uh, the uh, Youth Ambassador Initiative. And the third one is the International Day of Prayer and Awareness uh, Against Human Trafficking. Uh, Marion, is your turn now. Then tell us about the International Day and the Youth Initiative, please. Thank you. Thank you, Alessandra. And uh, thank you for all of you who are with us today. Um, I think what everyone has said is that really this report is a mirror, is giving echo to everything that is happening on the grassroots. And that's why in addition to, so the main part of the report is really about the regions, the continents and what is happening there. But that's why we also added some good practices that the networks shared with us, um, as well as stories of survivors. There's one story of Miriam from Burkina Faso and one from Lakshmi from India. Uh, and a testim testimonies from sisters, especially one from Colombia, Sister Ilsa. Um, and as Alessandra said, we also wanted to share with you three special events of 2021. The first one of which was the seventh edition of the International Day of Prayer and Awareness Against Human Trafficking, which happened on February 8th, 2021. The theme was an economy without trafficking. Um, and it was special because Talitakum, along with the WISC, along the, with the USG and all the partners in the organization of the day, uh, launched for the first time an online marathon of prayer, which really helped us to gather more widely and, and be more present together in prayer. Uh, and as Pope Francis said that day, and I quote, Prayer touches the heart and impels us to concrete action, to innovative and courageous actions, end of quote. Um, so it was important because the more people, uh, the sisters were able to reach through that International Day of Prayer, the more actions can be undertaken against human trafficking. The second focus was the call to action, with which Sister Abby and uh, Alessandra mentioned already. Uh, this a uh, call to action was launched on November 25th, 2021. And there also has a special importance uh, in that it was the first document that was calling governments and all people of goodwill to act, to change our system, and uh, to really address the root causes of human trafficking. And finally, last but not least, the, the last focus that we wanted to share with you through this report is the Talita Kum Anti-Trafficking Youth Ambassadors Initiative, which the journey of which started in, in Jordan in 2018, but it took a special turn in Asia 
uh, in September and October when sisters from different networks in, on the continent identified, formed and accompanied 26 youth ambassadors to help them to uh, organize especially anti-trafficking anti prevention activities in schools, in parishes, in church groups. Um, really the idea is so that young people can be empowered as protagonists to raise awareness among their peers. And this has really been an inspiration for other networks, but also for the Talita Kum International team, um, a model of how we can involve the younger generations, which is why we started also uh, to involve more young people in the pr preparation of the International Day of Prayer 2023. So hopefully we can learn from Asia and from other networks that are putting that um, that are implementing this Youth Ambassadors Initiative. Thank you. Thank you, Marion. Thank you. Now, uh, it's with us Sister Bernadette Reyes from Vatican News. Um, she's a journalist and commentator. Uh, Sister Bernadette. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello to all of you. Thank you, thank you. Then, from your point of view, you read already, you read the report. Then, from your point of view, what, um, what is the aspect that struck you most uh, uh, about the report? The, the aspect that struck me the most was it's a first report and yet it's incredible it, it's almost like it already has 10 years of experience behind it and i don't say that lightly uh, for any of you who know me when it comes to communication my bar is set uh, pretty high um this report um as sister gabriella stated in in other aspects of talitha kum has many many years behind it of small steps that have been taken in particular in this situation in a communication plan uh, that Talitha Kum has been unrolling little by little. So the, the graphic design, um, which is incredible, along with you know, the, 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 the reporting that is behind it, the organization of the report is, is excellent and speaks about the network behind it. Uh, the branding that Talitha Kum has been uh, taking part in in the last few years is extremely not noticeable also in the report, which, which demonstrates a cohesiveness. And um, just as the, there are networks that are behind this empire, this global empire that is the most lucrative in the world, um, out surpassing the arms and drug trade uh, combined, if I'm not uh, mistaken from the last statistics I've read. Um, this report is a, a tangible example of the culture that's in the Talitha Kum network. It, and uh, Sister Pat Murray already uh, noticed one of those, and that is that not just simply reporting the data, uh, but that as Pope Francis is always reminding us behind the data, there are individual people for every number that's in that data, there is a person or a few people behind it. So to be able to hear some of those stories. So in my opinion, Talitha Kum, you've set your bar high. There are, there are some improvements that could be made, but on the whole, keep, keep it up. We expect to see something even better next year but a tremendous um, way to communicate, especially to your funders, uh, also to potential funders, but also to the people themselves who are uh, working behind the scenes, tremendous encouragement it must give all of you who are at that grassroots. And for me as a, as a communicator, um, it, it shows me that, that any charism, including one that's not directly touching the people involved, can be involved in the Talitha Kum network for the benefit of, of so many brothers and sisters who who have no one else so thank you so much uh, you've done a wonderful job you can be proud thank you very much sister bernadette then now 
we open the floor to feedback comments from all the participants. Please. Yeah, please participate to this uh, debate and share your thoughts. You can also use the, uh, use the chat if you prefer, if you have any comments. I read, thanks a lot for this clear, concrete, holistic presentation and excellent ministry indeed. Our ministry from Enera Rastello. Uh, the youth ambassadors are inspiration for us at Akrat in Australia. We love hearing about it. Cindy Bowen. Uh, greetings from Zimbabwe. Sister Anna Teresa Talita Kum Zimbabwe coordinator. Yeah, there is a uh, there is somebody that is ready to talk. Then Gigi Tupas, thank you. Um, good uh, good day, everyone. Um, I'm Gigi. I colla I'm collaborating. I'm where I'm from International Justice Mission, and many of you know that we have been collaborating with the Kung Philippines, and on some occasion. We've also partnered with Talita Kung Asia together with Sister Abby and the other sisters. So first of all, sisters, I really believe in what you're doing. Uh, you know, you know that uh, we're really grateful for your partnership with us. And the report I was listening to to the input, and really it is a confirmation and affirmation of how Talita Kung has really been true in being the hands and feet, really a network all over the world. So my, my question, and really I know it's already happening. Um, I, I'm really asking, uh, Sister Abby has already said this in the call to action. I, I look forward to how um, Talita Kum together with other global uh, anti-slavery uh, networks and organizations such as ours can work together in strengthening the protection part uh, because I'm seeing we're doing a lot of things as church already helping the survivors, giving them voice, allowing them to lead and that's what we're all doing. But also it, uh, I was wondering if uh, how to proceed later on with uh, partnering in strengthening protection, meaning um, uh, uh, reporting uh, and then supporting the the justice systems or the laws within each country or the region so that we can prevent uh, human trafficking and then we can easily support, uh, for example, repatriating all the other victims back to our country and then also strengthening that network of services for the survivors. Sorry, <laughs> I, I, uh, it's quite a lot, but um, I know Talita Kung is already doing that on the ground and some regional and global level. It would be good uh, to, to uh, have a joint meeting together with other state, uh, stakeholders because I know with some of our partners, They've been also really wanting to connect with uh, Talita Kung. Thank you. Sister Abby, I think. Uh, okay, I can just respond because uh, as Gigi mentioned, we we'll continue collaboration uh, with other ag agents, international agency, but particularly uh, in the Philippines with uh, participation of Gigi. We really need to strengthen our collaboration in this regard, as uh, Gigi mentioned. We are hoping that we could really uh, create, uh, how do you say, an apps or contact information that we could really collaborate uh, to address some issues, uh, particularly uh, those being tropic uh, uh, to destination countries. Uh, this is real. Uh, but we need to improve our uh, system or tools in order to uh, connect with each other right away. Actually, it's in the right away. So uh, thank you, Gigi, for this collaboration. 
And uh, so uh, we really invite our sisters all over the world that we could continue this uh, sharing information, sharing practices, our, uh, inform our contact information. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Rabbi. Then um, I read another message. Uh, hello, I am from Talita Kung Youth in Japan, and we want to know more actions can we do to help and increase awareness on human trafficking. For sure, uh, Marion uh, and Myra will be in touch with you. Uh, you will find all the contact in our website, but we will save also the chat, then we can be in contact. No, Marion? Yes, for sure, we can discuss about opportunities later after this meeting. Um, thank you, Dan. Uh, a, a great news, the report is online. At the moment, you find the report on the homepage uh, in English, but we have already the translation uh, in, in French, Spanish and Italian. And then in the next weeks, uh, it's a promise, a commitment, you will find also in other languages. And um, I would uh, then thank you, uh, thank you uh, to all the speakers and to you, all the participants, to be here with us. And um, I would also close with this. 20 years ago, the 2001 Plenary Assembly of the International Union, Union of General Superiors committed itself to work in solidarity with one another within our own religious communities and in the countries in which we are located to address consistently at every level the abuse and sexual exploitation of women and children with particular attention to the trafficking of women which has become a lucrative multinational business. Then, as we said, please keep in mind the report is an instrument of work a tool for everybody. Read it, use it, and share it. Thank you very much, and have a good day. <laughs>